This is a film about a town, a small town in North Oxfordshire called Chipping Norton. There is nothing remarkable about this town, unless it's the Tweed Mill you've just seen. It's a beautiful place, but luckily for us, so are many others. It is ancient, as you can see from this view of the town centre, and it's full of good buildings. What is wrong with it is the same thing that is wrong with every small town in England, traffic. Vehicles seem to have taken over the place. There's been a town here for a long time, fitting into the landscape, with views of the far country from every street, and with that satisfactory sense of enclosure and of a firm division between town and country, which is so easy to blur. The marketplace, the heart of the town, contributes to this enclosed character. And it's full of good buildings, ranging from the important classical town hall to unpretentious 17th, 18th, 19th century shops, pubs, and cottages. This handsome Georgian coaching house has been sympathetically restored. This early 18th century facade is enriched with pilasters. Here is the upper side of the marketplace where every building is in keeping and in scale. This is Webb's, a charming and important Victorian glass-fronted building. A little further on, this beautiful Georgian townhouse is still in private occupation. Then, as the street follows the contours of the hillside, we have a romantic jumble of small-scale buildings. And at the far end of the marketplace, the blue ball closes the vista into horse fair. But of course, towns, however old and beautiful, are not there just to be looked at. They exist to serve their people's needs. In this pub, the Unicorn, for example, people have been drinking off and on ever since the 17th century. You also need shops, even if the customers only look in at the windows. Farming, our oldest industry, is still intimately connected with places like Chipping Norton. This farm is almost in the town. Then there must be somewhere in a town for the children to play. They could hardly have anywhere more delightful than this. There is nothing new about the need to provide housing for old people in a town. These almshouses were founded out of the prosperity of the medieval wool trade, and they fit snugly into this lane, leading to the handsome wool church, still perhaps more important to the town's life than we are sometimes prepared to admit today. The Tweed Mill, a splendid example of 19th century industrial architecture at its most eccentric, still prosperous and giving work to local people. A town is for people to work in. Not everyone wants to commute. The medieval guild hall is the headquarters of the borough council. And, of course, the market. Certainly a most ancient institution in this town, as its original name, Cheaping, implies. And perhaps the pleasantest way of doing one's shopping. <coughs> not perhaps as pleasant as it ought to be. This young mother has to watch her children pretty carefully to make sure they don't get knocked over by traffic. Here in New Street, you see particularly well how life is becoming increasingly difficult and uncomfortable for pedestrians, not only in Chipping North. Other towns are suffering. Look at Whitney a hundred years ago. And now. Henley then and now. Then and now. Oxford, St Giles, 
then and now. Then and now. The Sheldonian, as it was, and as it is. The Broad, as it was. Now you can hardly see its time. And so back to Chipping Norton, the marketplace as it was and as it is. And New Street, by which all the traffic from the west to London enters the town. An extremely narrow street, lined on each side with an attractive mixture of buildings of different periods. It also forms a dramatic gateway into the town centre and partly frames the town hall at the top of the hill. The dark crack is New Street from the marketplace, the glass fronted shop, and forming in the corner, this handsome Georgian building, all spoilt by traffic. Pedestrians are nowhere. What is the solution to this problem? Here is a plan of this part of the town as it is, showing the corner of New Street and Marketplace. You can see how extremely narrow it is and how large vehicles have to swing out to get round. So the authorities want to knock down all the buildings on the right side including the Georgian one on the corner, so as to widen the street and make it easier for traffic. This is what the plan would look like after the demolitions and widening. The traffic can, of course, come into the town up New Street much more easily and faster than it could before. But when it gets to Horse Fair, there will be more congestion, leading to demands for more demolitions. And this is how the shape of old towns is literally eroded away. Meanwhile, at the New Street corner, the traffic comes pouring through without let or hindrance. But has this really solved anything? No, this problem must be looked at as a whole. Here is a plan of the town. Good. Are there any potential diversions within the town? Is there a new bypass planned? These, which ought at least to be discussed so as to avoid the tragic erosion and gradual destruction of this beautiful place and restore it to its inhabitants. Towns are for people.